hopefully you have mastered the basics of Fourier transforms and thinking about adding up different waves of different frequencies or different wave numbers or different wavelengths and building a different function out of them. Now we're going to go into the third tab of the Fourier making waves FET simulation. And now this one is working a little bit different in that it's more, more explicitly a Fourier transform. Um, and this one is a lot harder to understand. So please, please do make sure that you have the basics down first. So here, what we're seeing are the amplitudes of our different, uh, of our different components. And notice what's on the axis now is Kn. So this is wave number. So again, we're talking about space right now. So it's wave number. If we flip to time, we see that this would be angular frequency. So that's related to frequency. So this is effectively how much of each frequency component is there. Then we can see individual waves. And then down here, we have added them up. So now what we see out here, this T1 corresponds to the period over which it repeats. And you can see very clearly that our wave packety looking thing is repeating. Now that actually corresponds to the spacing between our Co uh, our components. So this is something to know is that as long as you have some spacing between your components, you're going to have a repeating wave packet. We have to get to a continuous wave form in order to not have it repeat ever. So what we can do is play with these different uh, terms here. And one of the things that I like is turning on the envelope. And now you can see that there there's a Gaussian wave packet here. Again, we have some oscillation in between and in the actual quantum mechanics simulation version of this, you'll see that that, that phase is, is moving in a certain way. Um, but the key is to notice that this has a, a Gaussian sort of uh, envelope. So this is our, and let me go back to space since that's what we're usually working in in quantum. So our spatial representation, it has a Gaussian representation a Gaussian envelope. Now this case where it's wave number, this relates to momentum. So in the quantum mechanics version, this is relating to momentum. Notice that this also has a Gaussian envelope. So this helps you think through that transformation between a position, a position space representation, and then a momentum space representation. Again, this simulation isn't quantum mechanics specific, um, so that's why I'm trying to explain how to think through it. So the first one is the spacing. We can change the spacing. And notice that down here it's in terms of pi, since this is 14 pi and that's 16 pi, this middle one is 15 pi. So right now that spacing is pi. So again, this is wave number, so the pi just has to do with kind of converting wavelength into this other kind of one over space. So if I take it down to pi over two, it has gotten more dense, right? So we now have a more dense distribution. And in fact, that repetition distance has gotten bigger. So if I now make it less dense, it's now more closely spaced, right? That repetition is smaller. So one way to think about this is that the more terms you have, the further apart those individual wave packets are. And another way of saying that is that the more terms you have, the longer of a close to completely destructive interference you can create. Because if you only have two waves, it's hard to make a long, a long distance of constructive interference. You just can't. So now if we make them, let's say, really close, you can see that now they're really closely spaced and I really have to zoom out up oh, and that's as far as the simulation will even let me zoom out to see where that next one is. So now we have a lot of destructive interference and you can see that here, right? All of these waves are like here, they're all kind of doing the same thing, right? Here, they're all kind of going up and then they're coming down. And so in that region, yeah, you, you get you get a wave. But as we move, I don't even know how to scroll to the side, but as you move out here, now they're doing a bunch of different stuff. Some are going up, some are going down. So that's how you lead to that destructive interference. So now what if I switch to a continuous wave function, right? And here we can again see, I've just turned on that envelope around here, but I can take that spacing down to zero. 
that means I have an infinite number of components. And it can't show me that, right? But now you see here, okay, I still have my nice little envelope. It's now showing that integral form rather than that um, sum. But as I zoom out, that second packet never appears. If I have an, a continuous distribution here, that's where you just never see another wave packet. Now you can say, well, what's going to happen if I change my wave packet center? And let's actually switch back to a spacing of pi over 2. Okay, so if I change my wave packet center, you can think of this as effectively changing, in quantum mechanics speak, the average momentum. So if I increase it, it has increased k. Now, watch what's happening down here. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can see more clearly. Okay, so right now, if I count how many... Oh, it's a little bit tricky. Let me count how many antinodes I can clearly see. I'm not sure about this. So let's call it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight antinodes. Now, let me turn this way down. And now I see one, two, three, four, five, six antinodes. Right? Okay, so here's one version of it. Notice that I'm keeping the spacing the same. And then I'm turning it up. So you see a small difference, right? Watch, watch just the envelope now. So I have a really high momentum. I have a really low momentum. That wave packet envelope has changed a little bit, but not, not really very much. You can almost think of that as kind of a limitation of the simulation. But really, watch what's happened to this little jiggly bit, right? That's the technical term, obviously. It's kind of, we have what, four clear antinodes? And now we have a bunch more. So one way to think about that is what you really have here is that we've made this wavelength, for lack of a better term, smaller. So your average k value, right, the center, kind of tells you what your average wavelength, well, wave number would be. So higher so higher center here in K, which would correspond to higher momentum, means shorter wavelength here, even though the envelope is the same. Okay, so if I change my spacing now, right, that's where that repetition has changed. But now we don't actually see the little jiggly bit changing. So the spacing between the components changes your repetition between the wave packets. The wave packet center is changing kind of how jiggly it is. And again, that's going to correspond to kind of your average momentum. But now we haven't changed this envelope. That's where the wave packet width comes in. Now notice that here on the controls, we have two separate controls of the wave packet width. But if I change one of them, the other correspondingly changes. So if I want to make my wave packet width become smaller in momentum, or k-space, smaller, smaller, smaller. I have fewer momentum terms, which means that my wave packet in space has gotten much wider. That envelope has gotten much wider. So if I zoom out, I can say, hey, I, can, I want this to be more narrow, so I turn down my width in x. But in order to do that, I've, by necessity, have to have more terms in k or more significant terms in K, which means this width gets wider. So this is a visual representation of the uncertainty principle. And this is just math here. This is just a Fourier transform. This is not, in fact, quantum mechanics, but this is the core idea of the uncertainty principle, that in order to have this wave packet be more narrow in space, I have to have more terms and momentum, which means I have more uncertainty on what my momentum actually is. So please play with this. I think this is hugely helpful. Um, again, it's not quantum mechanical. It's more of just a general simulation of Fourier transforms, um, but it's great to play with and really helps you think through what's happening just mathematically before we add some of the weird quantum mechanics in.